there welcome to inquiring minds my name is doug and i'm back with today's fountain pen review the asvine v126 vacuum filler asvine was kind enough to contact me and send me this pen for review it's a lovely translucent cigar shaped fountain pen with gold hardware i've had this pen for a couple of weeks now i've had it in pieces i've had it filled with a couple of different kinds of inks and i'm very impressed with it in all respects how it looks how it writes and how it feels in the hand so I'll be sad to see it go because I'm giving this pen away to a lucky Inquiring Minds subscriber. What's the occasion? Well, Inquiring Minds has quietly surpassed 2 million views on the channel. But for what you are about to see next, we must enter quietly into the realm of genius. So keep watching to find out how to win this pen. But also keep watching because you'll find out how similar this pen is to these two other vacuum fillers the pen bbs 456 and the narwhal original plus i'm sure you're saying that i should have my eyes examined because these three pens look totally different on the outside but what about the inside eh plus now we have another contender for best under 60 dollars us vac filler because now we have the current inquiring minds champ the pen bbs 456 along with the Narwhal Original Plus, the Wingsung 699, and both the Asvine V169 and V126. Now, I don't have a Twisby VAC 700 to add to this shootout, but as soon as Twisby sends me one, I'll put it in the running. I don't think the Twisby is all it's cracked up to be anyway. <laughs> Let's see if this new Asvine V126 can knock off, pardon the expression, the champion Pen BBS 456 and find out how to win, nudge, nudge, this pen, shall we? Right now. So let's get right down to it. In order to win this pen, simply be an Inquiring Minds a subscriber and leave a comment in the comment section telling me how wonderful I am and how great my channel is. I'll pick the best sycophantic comment as the winner. There will, of course, be a skill testing question. Spell sycophant. I'm teasing, of course. Just leave a comment in the comment section and say anything you like that doesn't get you banned from my channel. On Monday morning, February 27th at 8 a.m. PST, I will randomly select the winning comment. I will reply to the winning comment, post a notice of the winner in the community section, and as a pinned comment to this video. The winner will have 48 hours to email me at inquiringminds at gmail.com with their name and shipping address so I can mail out the prize. If no one responds within 48 hours, I'll do the whole thing again. Of course, I reserve the right to refuse to ship to places in the world where Canada Post refuses to deliver. So there you go. Now there are those among you right now that will be clicking away from this video now that you have that information. <laughs> go ahead make my day go ahead make my day are they gone good the rest of you already know i'll be giving vital information at the end of this video which will be crucial for winning the pen and on with the review so what did i mean when i said these four pens were similar quite simply these four vacuum fillers have exactly the same vacuum filler hardware unit i'll get to the full review of the asvine v126 in a moment but first I want to take these four pens apart. The Pen BBS 456 is the oldest vacuum filler in the group and the Asveen V169 came out last year and the Narwhal Original Plus and the Asveen V126 are relatively new. And the Wingsung 699 has been around for several years. Now the vacuum unit on the Asveen V126 is identical to the one that's on the Asveen V169 so we'll leave that out of the equation for a moment but now i'm going to take the vacuum units out of all four of these pens of course one of these is not like the others and that's the wingsong 699 so we can take it out because it is a completely different unit uh, than these three so these are the three in question and again the asvine v169 has an identical unit to the asvine v126 asvine unit here is the narwhal unit and here is the pen bbs unit and you might be able to see that they are identical except for the pen bbs's rubber stop valve at the end is just a slightly different shape it has a different it has a wedge 
rather than the ring. So there is a slight difference with the Pen BBS rubber stop valve, but otherwise all of the hardware is identical right down to the metal threading. This means to me that these parts are made in the same place on the same machines. These four units are interchangeable as well. The Asvine goes into the Pen BBS, the Narwhal goes into the Asvine, and mix and match as you like. I did a short video where I demonstrated this between Pen BBS, Asvine, and Narwhal. And of course, it isn't surprising the new Asvine vacuum filler uses the same hardware as its predecessor. I'm not saying this is good or bad, I'm just saying this is a fact. This is actually good for consumers as compatibility between fountain pens is a good thing for us. Let me put these back together again. And before we get to the shootout, let's take a close look at this Asvine V126. And I'll put these pens head to head once we get to the likes and dislikes. I think they made some terrific improvements on this pen over the previous vacuum filler, the V169 which I had a number of issues with. And you can see that review by clicking right up here. But I can say right off the bat that I like this Asvine V126 a lot better than the Asvine V169. Overall, it is a translucent turned acrylic cigar shaped pen with gold hardware. And I really like the decision to make this translucent rather than transparent. From the top, we see the cigar shaped finial, which is separated from the cap by a gold metal ring that holds the clip in place. The clip is a long tapering pilot ball type clip that is nicely springy and usable. The cap tapers up to a wide gold metal cap band that has Asvine stamped into the front and the model number on the back. The turned acrylic tapers down to the barrel leaving no step here at all. And the barrel tapers all the way down to a gold metal ring that separates the blind cap which has that rounded end. And the blind cap unscrews to retract that vacuum filler rod. The cap unscrews with one and about a half turn to reveal the matching translucent acrylic section that tapers up to a small flare towards the number six size steel Asvine gold colored nib and black plastic feed. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for maintenance or swapping. And the collar, nib, and feed are identical to the standard number six Moonman collar feed and nib units and to the narwhal collar feed and nib units. So let's do some swapping. Here's my three-year-old Moonman M600. Let's unscrew the nib unit. There it is. And let's unscrew the nib unit on the Asvine. And let's do the swap. Here's the Asvine, goes into the M600. And there you go, it's a moon ass, or it's an ass moon, you make the choice. And let's put the moon man in the Asvine V126, and there you have a moon ass. What about narwhal, what are we gonna call that? Let's take the nib unit out of the narwhal and put it in the Asvine. Oh, what was that? A preview. <laughs> so there you go. Moon wall, nar moon, nar ass. The choices are infinite. Let's put these back before I get confused. What's the matter, Pop? I'm confused. So that answers the question to where all these parts are made. The answer is the same place. Perhaps Moon Man has actually changed its name for the third time. Moon Man to Majon, and then from Majon to Asvine. Just asking. But let's get back to this Moon Man nip. I mean this, uh, uh, what is it? It's an art narwhal, no, Asvine. Let's get back to this Asvine nip. It has some very nice scroll work, a script letter M in a circle, kind of like what Schmidt does, and Asvine written in script lettering. And these are not laser etched, but roll stamped into the nib. That tells me that the brand was added to the nib at the point of manufacture and not laser engraved. The section unscrews to reveal the top of the barrel. And it has a silicone O-ring right there to prevent leakage. And this is a big upgrade from the V169 which the section wasn't removable on this pen. It makes it so much easier to clean and maintain a vac filler if you can get the section off 
because you don't always have to be messing around with disassembling the vac mechanism. The bottom of the section is separated from the barrel by a gold metal ring, which is thankfully glued to the section so you don't lose it, which is not the case with this ring at the end, which does separate from that barrel and so you have to be careful not to lose it. I speak from experience. The inside of the cap shows a step milled into the acrylic that meets with the top of the section to seal the nib from evaporation. And you can see that right through the translucent cap here when I close the pen. You can see that step right there meeting with the top of the section. And let's take a moment here to see how the vac filler works. With the rod extended, we can dip the nib into the ink, in this case colored water, up to the filler hole, which is at the bottom of the feed right there. So you have to immerse that in the water or ink. And then you press the rod down. When the piston moves down the inside of the barrel, it creates a vacuum behind the piston. And then when it gets to the wider part of the barrel, the vacuum is released and that vacuum sucks up whatever the nib is dipped into. And you might be able to see that you get maybe a half a fill. And here is a tip for those of you who aren't faint of heart. In order to get a full fill, you can perform this maneuver. Once you've got it half full, pull the rod back out like that, slowly. And then, it's good that this is translucent because you can see that air. You're gonna push that air back up. I always put a little Kleenex around this point. And you push that air up to the top until it starts coming out of the top of the feed. If you push it very slow, there we go. You see that bead of water right there? And I'm holding on to that vac rod because if I let go of it, it's gonna to wanna to push itself back up and then put it back in the ink and push again. And there you end up with a, what I would consider a very full full feed. There's just one little air bubble in there. Of course, the chances are 50-50. You'll end up with a Roshizuku on your shorts, and you'll have to answer embarrassing questions about why your crotch is blue. I may not look it, but I'm the future of physics, so just move on. You could explain about being a fountain pen nut, but it's much easier just to explain that you pissed yourself and you're taking some really funky vitamins. Much easier to believe. The cap posts deeply and securely and the pen is beautifully balanced posted. This is another huge upgrade from the unwieldy V169. And it's a big advantage over the narwhal as well as the narwhal posts right on the back of that knob and makes it hugely long and unbalanced. The pen is plenty long enough and nicely balanced in the hand unposted as well. I tell you folks, this is one impressive vac filler fountain pen for only $26. As I said earlier, Asvine sent me this pen for review, but the pen sells for $28.50 US and comes in three colors, brown, blue, and white. The brown one is only $26.99 for some reason. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Asvine V126 with a Wingsong 699 vacuum filler, a Pen BBS 456 vacuum filler, and an Asvine V169 vacuum filler and a Narwhal Original Plus vacuum filler. Let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. I used to be able to say the Pen BBS 456 is the best in the group at posting, but uh, that title now is owned by the Asvine V126. And of course the Asvine V169 and the Narwhal don't post. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Asveen or Asvine V126 vac filler. And it has a number six size medium steel nib. Let's check the wetness. It's nicely wet. 
one thing I failed to mention if you're new to vacuum fillers especially this style vacuum filler is that you need to open up that stop valve by unscrewing the blind cap slightly that moves that little stopper valve back from the end of the section to allow the ink to flow so I'm very impressed with this nib right out of the box it's showing a little bit of baby's bottom right there like that but that should be fairly easy to fix but this nib is very very smooth and wet and the ink is Hiroshizuku Asagao and here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com Asagao stands for morning glory and it is a glorious bright blue ink that I think matches this pen nicely as the line variation you can squeeze out a little bit of line variation from this nib but it is stiff as to be expected from Chinese steel and the line this pen makes is 0 0.6 millimeters in thickness which makes it a Western medium and a Japanese medium to broad on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description and for our quote And for some reverse writing very smooth a lot drier and skips and for some quick writing that feed is actually keeping up okay you did notice a little bit of skipping earlier on but that's because I had this full of water and I just now filled it with Asagao and I had the valve closed so now that I'm writing with it a lot more, it's actually behaving exactly the way I expect it to behave. I've been writing with this pen for about two weeks and I've not had any issues with it. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I promised you a shootout and I did one in my own empirical spreadsheet nerd kind of way. And here's the spreadsheet I created. I listed the six pens, their price, whether they post, the capacity, whether they had a number six size nib, the variety of finishes available, nib sizes available, whether you can remove the section, and the weight in grams. And of course, I added the Twisby VAC 700 as well, in absentia. Then I ranked them by giving each category a score out of six for most of them, but the yes no categories I gave either a one or a zero. I did weight the postability category by giving yes a two and no a zero. I think being able to post a vac filler is a big deal. A perfect score is 34 and to my surprise, the Wing Sung 699 came in first, followed by the Asvine V126 and my champion, the Pen BBS 456 came in third. The numbers are really close between the Wing Sung and the Asvine though. So I'd almost say it's a tie for first. It does confirm my feeling that the Asvine V26 does in fact displace my favorite vac filler, the Pen BBS 456. The 456 is a great pen, but it does have some drawbacks. The biggest being this weak point right here with the metal at the top of the barrel. They tend to break at that point there. And you get metal threads on acrylic with the cap. And the really nice finishes are a lot more expensive than $34. So in a matchup between the clear glass 456 and this nice blue Asvine V126, I'd have to give the nod to the Moon Man. I mean, Asvine. 
I like everything about this new vacuum filler and even though it's early in 2023 I predict this pen will be in my top 10 pens for 2023 video next December. The nib is great out of the box. It's extremely well built. The translucent acrylic is really lovely. It feels awesome in the hand posted or unposted and has a huge ink supply. When this pen takes off perhaps we'll see more finish options. Then it will really challenge the pen BBS 456. And there you have it. Don't forget to be a subscriber and add a comment in the comment section before Monday morning at 8 a.m. PST to be entered in the random draw. And since you stayed with me, here's the secret word to add to your comment. Just end your comment with the word bingo. Bingo. There you go. When I was a teacher, I used to love playing this trick on my students. I'd give them a test where the first thing on the test said, please read through all the questions before beginning. And the last question was, please don't answer any of the questions above. Put your name at the top of the page and hand it in now. Some kids would sit there sweating for a long time while their classmates were giggling. Such fun. <laughs> Such fun. Good luck to all of you. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.